Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I know it's 7.30 on a Monday night, so I'm not gonna keep you terribly long. Um, just wanna make sure you guys have some important information that way you guys feel like you know what's going on and um, are equipped for the season. Um, if you're in this meeting, you're a rec one coach. That means you're coaching a first or second grade team. Hopefully everyone's in the right place. Um, if not, you can leave <laughs> because nothing's going to be applicable to you. Let's go. Um, we're going to go over just a couple things. We'll start with lawn soccer. If you're new to lawn soccer, we'll talk about the club just a little bit. Um, key contacts, some policies, communication with your team, and then just program format and rules. Um, that's going to be important for you to know going into the season. Um, this is kind of just our, our lounge soccer framework. It outlines kind of different options that we have, um, everything that we offer in our rec program, and then also in our travel program. Um, our rec program starts at micros, which is three years old, and then it goes up until high school. So theoretically, a kid could play in the recreational program up from three years old all the way up until they um, are graduating high school, which is awesome. Um, and then our travel program starts with U8 Academy, uh, which starts when they're turning eight. And then U9, which is eight turning nine-year-olds, is the first year um, that we have like our travel program option. Um, so that'll be the first kind of age that they can enter the travel program. Um, here are some things to note, just as a coach, you may have questions from parents about like different options that we have, different opportunities that we offer. Um, here's all the kind of extra things. So we have our regular fall and spring season, and then we have our supplemental programs, um, a big supplemental program that a lot of people usually register for is Rec TA. That's kind of an additional program that they can register for in addition to the spring or fall season. It's run by our travel coaches and our paid trainers. So um, it's kind of a way to experience the travel program, have a little bit more of an experienced coach, a little bit more of a different environment uh, for somebody who's maybe looking for something extra to do. Um, or looking for kind of to see what travel might be like to see if that's something that they're going to be interested in. Um, and then during the summer, we have our summer camps. Those run a week long, so you can register for any particular week that, you know, you want to participate. And then over the winter, we have our winter indoor clinics, um, which is similar to Rec TA. Um, it's something we offer just recreational players, um, but you can register to show up um, during the winter, it'll be seven, I think, sessions over the winter, and it's indoors with our paid coaches. So just a little bit of a different environment um, that people can register for, for something to do during the winter. Um, and then we have one-day events kind of sprinkled throughout the year, um, our free play days, holiday camps. We have some, uh, like, schools out camps that we've started doing. So if there's a day that, you know, the kids don't have school, sometimes we offer a day camp that they can come to. Um, that's good just to kind of keep an eye out because people are typically interested in that and they may ask you, you know, if you know of any that are happening. Um, this is our online coaching support. So this slide, it's really helpful for anyone who's looking for extra resources. Um, if you're a new coach, if you're an old coach, but like on any end of the spectrum, but you're wanting more resources, you're wanting your session plans, you're wanting to kind of know like what it looks like, what the procedures are, what is a Saturday game going to entail. Um, all of that information is on our website. You go to loungesoccer.com, you go to the rec tab, and then you go to the coaches tab. Uh, we have two different places you can look. You'll have our coaches info center, which will have all the rules, policies, um, trainings you can do. Um, and then our coaches education resource center is going to be kind of things that you can use throughout the season, um, your session plans, helpful articles, um, materials that can give you extra ideas for different activities you can incorporate into your practices, and then videos that can you know, kind of show you like, how do I set this up? Or if I want to teach this, how do I do that? Um, we're really not lacking in resources for you guys. We know that we're a volunteer run program, and a lot of you are registered without any coaching experience. So we have a plethora of things to help you out. So hopefully you never feel like you don't know um, what you're doing. Um, and if you go through all this and you look at everything and you still feel like you need more resources, you can email me and we can send you some things. But um, we never want you to feel like you go into a practice and don't know what you're doing. Um, that's not the goal. So that's where you can go to find all that. Um, this is kind of equipment pickups. So it's gonna be important for you guys to kind of know just important dates of things that you're going to need to be at or do um, this week. So starting today through Thursday, so until March 21st, you'll be able to come pick up your coach's equipment. 
Um, if you coach in the past, this is different than what we've done because of where spring break falls are typical, um, like one day, Saturday kind of days and didn't work out. Um, but you can come by Lounge Soccer Park anytime this week um, until 7 p.m. So 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you'll just come pick up your equipment for your team and we'll be able to take care of that. Um, if you want the coaches on field clinic. So normally we'd have one Saturday where you can pick up your equipment and kind of watch an on field session. Since we're not doing that, um, if you want to watch a session, if you think that would be beneficial for you, um, we have coaches in our club on our travel side that have kind of agreed to partner with us and you can go out to one of their sessions and kind of watch how that works. Um, and there are travel coaches, so it should be, in theory, a really good session. So um, that should be good for you. You don't have to do it, but if you feel like that's something that you would want to do, then we have that opportunity for you. Um, we're going to go into just some general reminders. The team rosters were posted on Friday. I'm sure all of you know. Um, and if you've emailed me about your roster, hopefully I've responded. Um, I got through all the emails that came in over the weekend today. So if you emailed me after 4.30 p.m. today, I probably haven't gotten to it yet. But if you email me Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, um, I've managed to kind of get back to everybody on that. Um, a few things about your roster. Um, they're not finalized like totally there may be some changes that happen over the next couple of days um it's really hard when we have such a big program to get everything 100 percent right the first time so if you see like a player get added or a player gets switched out um it's probably because someone didn't wasn't able to make that practice day or someone requested something that we didn't do or um, any number of factors but just keep an eye on your roster this is important for you to know just because if you haven't sent out your uh, welcome to the team email you're going to want to do that if you have sent it out and then your roster changes and you get an extra player, you're going to want to make sure that they get that information too. So just take a note of who's on your roster. And if you get anyone added, just make sure that they get that info. Um, and then prospective players, this is just kind of a general rule of thumb. Please don't promise anything to anyone. Um, I've had a couple of emails so far that kind of went that way. Um, if you like guarantee or promise someone a spot on your team, um, it makes it really hard if we're not able to do that. Of course, we try our best and we do everything we can to accommodate that because we want you guys to have an you know, enjoyable season. We want to make things happen for you, but sometimes our hands are just tied in one way or another. Um, and if we have to say no after it's been like guaranteed to them, um, it's just a little bit harder for them to hear. So um, if that happens, if you have someone who wants to be on your team, go ahead and send them to me, have them email me. You can email me and if we can make it happen. We will. Um, just don't promise anybody anything because we just want to avoid hurting feelings um, as much as possible. Um, um, how it. many players oh, should? How many players should be on the roster? It'll be eight players max on a roster for Rec One. Um, you may have seven depending on the division. If um, there's different numbers, but eight's kind of the general rule. Then we try and get eight on a roster. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I'll take questions at the end, just in the future. If you have a question, I will have a time to answer to them. So um, don't worry about that. If you have a question, we'll get to it. Um, and then team officials, that just means head coach. Um, as you as a head coach are registered, congratulations. You are successful. You did it right. Um, if you want an assistant coach that's not registered yet, um, just and they're going to need to get registered. So this is kind of a situation where if you show up to practice, um, and you're looking for some extra help and you present it to your team, like, hey, would anybody be interested in helping out? If you get someone who says yes, um, just make sure they go to loudsoccer.com and register as an assistant coach. That way we can put them on your team. Uh, we just want to know who's who's where. We want to have documentation of who's involved and who's working with kids. Um, just to keep everyone safe, we, you know, on the kids' behalf, we want to know what's going on. So um, awesome. If you get an assistant coach, more help the merrier. Um, that's awesome. Just make sure that they get registered. We add them to your team. Um, and yeah, that's it on that. Um, just quickly, some required equipment. Shin guards are mandatory. You're going to need everyone to have a jersey. So if you were in kindergarten last season or um, you were in a program where we gave you jerseys, that's a little different. For Rec 1, you have to order them. So just make sure if anyone has any questions on your team about why they don't have a jersey, let them know that they'll need to go to loudsoccer.com and order it. Um, and then obviously cleats are recommended, but not required, um, but approved shoes are required. Like no one should be running around with flip flops on, like make sure they have sneakers if they're not going to wear cleats, closed toed shoes, something that, you know, is appropriate for what they're doing. Um, 
and yeah, a ball would be important. Um, you don't want to run a practice where only one kid brings a soccer ball. So if they ask what size they need, there'll be a size three. Um, and then other than that, should be should be all set. Um, for jewelry, make sure that they don't have any earrings in. Um, this is more important at the older ages, but we just don't want anyone getting hurt. If they have like a plastic bracelet on their wrist, like the referee may have them take it off. Um, I would say go by what the referee says. The referee says it's okay, fine. But if the referee says take it off, then you go ahead and listen to them since they are on the field, um, they are in charge. And then hard cast, we don't want anyone getting smacked in the face with a really hard cast. So uh, we're not going to say they can't play, but make sure it's wrapped up in bubble wrap or some kind of padding so that nobody gets injured um, that way. <laughs> Um, and then Dick Sporting Goods event, if you are new to Lounge Soccer, you don't know about this, we always have a Dick Sporting Goods event where we partner with them. And there's um, a weekend, it's March 29th through April 1st this this season, but you can get a discount. So um, if you have anyone on your team that's asking about where they can buy equipment or they haven't gotten that yet, um, if you let them know this date, they might will probably appreciate it because they'll be able to get a discount um, off and save a little bit of money. Um, in general, they'll need, well, for you guys, this is kind of important. If you want to buy extra stuff, you can. Um, but again, when you come pick up your equipment, you'll get pennies, cones, you'll get a game ball, you get a first aid kit. So don't feel like you have to go out and get anything. Um, if you want to buy something extra, you can. You can do it on this weekend and save some money, but you'll be given all the equipment that you need. Yeah. Uniforms. So again, if you have someone who needs to purchase a uniform, it's on our website. This will be on our website for you. The slides will be posted. If you want to come back, this is the link that you can go to. Um, but red and white jerseys, black shorts, and black socks is what's going to come in that kit. Um, so just so you guys know, that can be found there. Um, no heading at in the Rec 1 grades 1 through 2. Fifth grade, I think, is the first year that is permitted. Um, and then limited heading is allowed. Oh, sorry, no. Up till fifth grade, no heading. And then sixth and seventh grade, it's limited heading and then no restrictions after that for you 14 and up. Um, but for you guys, just know that there's no heading involved in the sport right now. Uh, concussions, usually we don't have any issues with concussions in first and second grade, but um, this can kind of go for any serious injury. If you see someone get hurt, you see someone fall down, take them out of the game, make sure that they're okay. Their parents should all be there, hopefully at this age. So normally they'll step in and take care of that. But just make sure that they're okay, check in on them. And then if anything serious happens, just let me know so that I'm in the loop and I can maybe check in on them and see how they're doing. Um, yeah, slide tackling, grades one through six, there's no slide tackling. Slide tackling at first and second grade may look like someone falling on the ground on accident. Um, I'm hoping nobody is intentionally slide tackling at this age, but if they do, just remind them, hey, we're not gonna do that um, and try and keep people on their feet. We just don't want anyone to slide tackle get hurt or slide tackle and then get stepped on and then get hurt. Um, just kind of avoiding that. Uh, weather and field alert. So this is important for you guys going into the season to know like what's the scenario and what's kind of the protocol for each different scenario. Uh, for practices while you're on the field during the week, that's going to be up to you to call. There's not going to be someone at the field to tell you to cancel or to go to your car. So if lightning happens, it's a 30 minute break. I said the, I said this at the beginning of the last meeting, but if you're halfway through your session and you have 40 minutes left and lightning hits, probably safe just to cancel for the day. Otherwise, you're going to get back and there's going to be 10 minutes left in practice. And that's if everyone gets back to the field right at 10 minutes. So um, use your judgment. That's up to you. Um, the only non-negotiable is that if there is lightning, you go to your car for at least 30 minutes. Um, and then it's an additional 30 minutes every time lightning hits again. So just keep that in mind because that'll be up to you. Everything else, though, is going to be communicated to you through us. So do not, please do not cancel your game Saturday morning because it's raining outside. Um, if we cancel games or if we reschedule games, that's all going to be communicated to us, from us to you via email. So um, if it is raining really hard Friday, uh, raining Saturday morning, you're not sure if the fields are open. Um, if you haven't heard from us, then they're open. Um, if you do hear from us, then you'll know because you'll get the email. Um, but yeah, so please don't cancel your game. We've had situations where our coach has been like, let's not show up today. It's not looking great. And then the other team showed up with no team to play. And, you know, that's not fun for anybody. Um, so, yeah, just 
Friday night, Saturday morning, if it looks bad out or the weather is not great, just be checking your email. Um, that way, if we do send something, you see it and you can let your families know. Um, and if you don't hear anything, we're probably not going to send an email saying we're on. So if you don't hear anything, just know that that means that your game is still on. Let's see. Team communication. So along with that, right, you're going to get the email that your game has been canceled. You're also going to get the email for any other information we need to send out. Uh, we're not going to send an email to every single parent and player that's registered in the program. Now that you guys have rosters, we're going to communicate directly through you. So you're going to kind of be our, our lane of communication to parents. So if we send something to you that your team needs to know, just make sure that you do forward that along so that they get that, right? We don't want to send you the email that the game's canceled and then have you not sent to your team and your team shows up wondering what's going on, right? Um, so just be that kind of bridge for us and get all that information to your families as necessary. Um, the other thing to communicate that's probably you know helpful is there's a lot of players and families that are new to rec soccer um, in our rec program, right? Like every year there's players that are new, no matter what grade, right? Whether it's first grade, fifth grade, eighth grade. So information is helpful, especially when you're like, not knowing what field you're going to, maybe you don't know what time. So reminder emails are nice. Um, you don't have to send them out, right? We don't want to put anything on your plate that you, you know, is too much, but a simple email kind of the night before, just a reminder, like, hey, we're at this field at this time, wear this jersey is always helpful. I know your families always appreciate it. Um, so that's something that's definitely recommended. Um, some important dates for you guys to know and write down, right? Ross was released on the 15th, that was Friday. You made it to the coaches meeting, congratulations. Um, you're here, that's the 18th. Um, equipment pickup and coaches clinic, again, that's the 18th through the 21st. So today through Thursday, 10 a.m. through 7 p.m., you can come pick up your equipment. Um, and then first day of practice, or first week of practice is April 1st. So April 6th is the first Saturday of the season. So that week leading up to the 6th is gonna be your first practice. So if you requested Tuesday, then the Tuesday before April 6th is gonna be your first practice. Um, and then this is important, especially if you coached in the past, because it's different. So um, don't don't miss this part. Usually our spring jamboree is the last um, Saturday of the season. This season, we're going to do it on the first Saturday. Um, so we're going to kick off the season kind of with our spring jamboree. It'll be a fun way to kind of get started. Everyone will play at LSP, which is Lounge Soccer Park. We'll have food trucks, different kind of activities for kids to do. It's really, really fun. Um, but just know that's going to be on April 6th. So it's the first weekend of the season, not the last weekend of the season. And then the final game will be May 18th. It's kind of more information on the Spring Jamboree that I went over, but games are here at LSP, so they'll all be played on turf. You'll play different towns. So normally you play Ashburn teams all season long. Um, at the Spring Jamboree, you'll play someone from a different town. So like Astra may play a Leesburg team or you may play a South Riding team or if you're in Leesburg, kind of just to give you a different opponent, different feel, and then it'll just be a way for us to celebrate opening day. Um, some things on practice that are important to know, just know that you're allocated half a field for practice. Um, and I always get questions about this. So um, just for your information, for you to kind of take into the back of your mind, you're probably going to have another team on your field. So if you show up to field two at Hutchinson Farm and there's another team there, that's because they're supposed to be there too. So you'll have half a field and then because the field has two goals, you'll have the goal that's on your half. Feel free to mix up with the other team that's there. If you guys want to scrimmage at the end, use both goals, that's totally fine. Um, but just know that when you're assigned a field, when you get there, you're going to have half that field. Um, you may find that you have a full field if you requested the right time at the right day, right location, just happens to have now a lot of coaches there. Um, that's awesome, but that's just not the norm. So just know that general rule of thumb, our policy is you get half a field and one goal for practice. Um, and then coaches lead the session. So you'll lead the session again on our uh, website during the coaches kind of resource info center, you can find session plans. So if you want to plan your session, you feel really great about it and you want to take that on, that's totally fine, do that. Um, but you don't have to, you can go on each week and find that session, week one session, week two session, and just use that. Um, we know that you guys are volunteer coaches, some you don't have any experience, so we make it as easy as possible for you, but that's where you can find that. Um, Loudensoccer.com, rec tab, coaches tab, coaches info center. Um, and then just to be nice to the person after you, try not to run up to the very last second of your practice. Try to end five minutes early, do your team chat off the field, that way, that say you have five o'clock practice, once six o'clock hits, 
the other team's not waiting for you to pick up, chat with your team, and then they don't get started until like 6.10. So um, just try to wrap up five minutes early and that gets the second group able to start on time. Um, Saturday schedules, again, they're posted March 27th. Um, they'll be on your team page. So when you email your teams, if you haven't already, um, when you email them and kind of introduce yourself, you can let them know that that's when they're gonna be posted. And then everyone will be able to see that in their team page. So once they're posted, if you go to your team page, you go to your schedule, all of your calendar will be there, your practices, your games, everything. Um, just double check details week to week. So what you wanna avoid is checking your schedule once right when it's posted and then never checking it again. Um, because like I said, like it's really hard to get everything right the first time. Like say we have a coach who's coaching two head two teams and they have a conflict on one day, we're going to have to fix that for them, um, which may bump your practice or your game up 30 minutes early or, or something like that. So make sure you're double checking that just, just so that you know that you're showing up the right time, right place. Um, don't assume that it's not going to change at all throughout the season. And if we change something like mid season, a couple of days before, like you'll get an email, we'll let you know, but um, definitely like right around when we post it, don't assume that that's set in stone because we may have to change it. So just check on that. Um, and then changes, location and time changes for weather, closure alerts, um, all that will be emailed out. And then on the game, so for you guys, if there's a referee there, he's going to be the one that calls it. So for practices, you're in charge. If there's lightning, you got to kind of call that. For your game, the referee will be in charge of that. So um, just kind of yield to what he says. Game reschedules. So game reschedules can be hard. Um, but not impossible. So if the game schedule is released and you need something changed, like you're out of town and not coming back until a certain time, or you coach two teams and you have a conflict, email me um, before you email me really angry, um, taking thinking I did it personally. Um, it's not personal. I didn't do it on purpose. Um, again, some things may not be right the first time. So just go in, we can change it. Like it's, it's, it's going to get worked out. Uh, we want to help you. We want to make sure you guys are able to do your job. So just let me know um, and we can go from there. We can make it work. Um, and then research is due for fields, right? We, so we have one rain day at the end of the season that we'll use. You may get your, like if say it gets rained out, we use the end of the season date. Say another gets rained out, we may schedule your game for during the week. So just know that we're going to try and make all the games rescheduled. Usually we get all seven games in, um, but just know that if that happens, you may be asked like, hey, instead of practice this week, can we you know, play a game on your practice field and just be flexible that way. Um, any other requests for changing a schedule can be very hard though. Like I said, it's not impossible, but it's hard. So if you have Sally's birthday party at a certain time and you email me asking for a change, we'll try, we'll, tr we'll try and make that happen, but we may not always be able to. So there's kind of like a little pyramid that you can go through. If you have an assistant coach, ask them first, your assistant coach can fill in. Um, if not, then let me know and it, we'll try and change it. Um, and then, yeah, so th I guess that's the two, right? Check with your assistant coach and then let me know. Um, but do not reschedule it on your own. There was a couple of times last season where we had a coach be like, well, we'll just show up at this field at this time we'll play. Um, and that went really poorly. So now it's in our slideshow <laughs> to make sure you make a note. Don't reschedule your own game. Um, you can go through us and we can, you know, get on the same page and make it work. But um, don't do that, please. <laughs> um, and then game day stuff, just some things to go over. Coach's equipment, again, you're going to pick it all up. You're going to get your first aid kit. You're going to get your game ball, pennies, cones, um, all things that you need. That'll be picked up. Um, but make sure you bring it to your game just so you have it. Um, home team wears red. Away team wears white. Um, if you don't remember that, then whatever team is listed first is the home team. So um, if you're, right, first grade boys Percival last name versus second first grade boys Percival versus last name, whichever – Name is first. If your name is first, you're home and you wear red. If your name is second, then you wear white. Hopefully that made sense. Um, try and be there early, right? Try and get your team 15 minutes early so you can warm up. And then you want to be there before your team. Um, so try and get there 20 minutes early. Um, if you have to be late one day, you know, communicate with your team so they know where you are and they're not like our coach didn't show up. Um, but do try and be there before your team and then give them time to warm up. Um, and then wait for the previous team to depart before you enter the field. Um, in four warm-ups, you can use off the field if the other team's still practicing or having their game. But when you're on the field warming up, try not to use where the goal arc is because that 
this particular area gets really torn up and we're trying to kind of keep our fields in good condition. So try and stay out of that area just for warm up purposes. So we use it as less as possible. Um, and then referees, coaches, greet them, say hi, we're all friends, right? Be positive, be a you know good role model for, for all people involved. So just be friendly, say hi, introduce yourself. That's the same thing as on the side. Um, here's a little image of what the field looks like. And it tells you where the, the parents can sit and it tells you where you can sit, right? Team A will be on one side of the field. Team B will be on the other. And then your team parents can sit across from you and the other team's parents sit across from them. Um, don't have your team parents behind you. Don't have your team parents behind the goal. Um, don't have your team all over the place. Try and keep it structured like that. Um, yeah, and then for the technical area, your list is team A or team B, try and stay in that area. Um, don't be running up and down the sideline and going over by the goal all over the place. Don't go on the other team side, like just kind of stay in your area, um, trying to limiting as, as many bad scenarios as possible. And then you're also not along the field. I don't know if it adds to that, but the referee will be on the field referring the game, you coach from the sideline where your team where your team is sitting. If you want to look at the FIFA laws, again, that's posted where all of our other coach resources are. Um, you can look up the latest FIFA laws and kind of learn up on that. You don't have to if you don't want to. The referee will be there to lead the game, but um, just know we have that resource for you. For our program, for our rec, run, rec one teams, we do 4v4 games and four 10-minute quarters. So hopefully your life is really easy, right, because you don't have to sub other than at quarters. You have one group of players who plays the first and second quarter, and you have one group of players that plays the third and fourth quarter. Um, so that makes it easy on you. Um, and then the one to two minute break will be in between the first quarter and second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, you have half time after quarter two. Um, yeah. Playing time and substitutions. This is rec soccer. Um, everyone needs to get playing time. So um, again, if all eight of your players shows up, makes your life really easy. Everyone plays two quarters. And if you don't have all eight players and you have to play someone more than once or more than twice, then we follow this kind of procedure. Um, no one should play three quarters without someone playing two quarters, right? So it shouldn't have Sammy playing one quarter while Devin played three quarters, right? You want to make sure it's 50-50. Um, and the same kind of goes for playing four quarters without three. So if you have a different number of players, you need to play someone twice. Don't play that one player in all four quarters. You should kind of pick different people to play a second quarter or a third quarter. And then substitutions are not made during half. Again, that makes your life easy. Um, play balance. This is just kind of to make sure things stay even. Um, again, this is rec soccer. Um, people are less committed at rec at the recreational level. That just happens. So you may have a game where you know not all your players show up. If a team has less than four players, which means they can't field a team for their quarters, um, then you have two options. One, you can play down, right? You can play 3v3 instead of 4v4. Um, how, or you can even out your numbers and loan players, right? So you can give the other team a player for each quarter and have one of your players different differentiate per quarter. Um, whatever works for you, right? That gives your players more playing time. Playing down 3v3 gives you you know, your players less playing time, but whatever you want to do, it's up to you. Um, but just make sure that you as the coach that has more players is being kind to the, the team that doesn't. Again, just a general kind of overarching rule. We want everyone to have a positive experience. We don't want, you know, one team to have a negative one while, while one team has a positive one just because they have less players or, or um, you know, aren't able to field the team. So work together on that. And then player positions. Again, it's 4v4, so positions are – it's a loose term. You can put them in positions. We usually start them in a diamond, right? One person up top, one person at back, and they're two out wide. I guarantee you as soon as you say go, players are going to go all over the place. Um, but if you are, like, really hitting home, like you're playing up top, you're playing in the back, then make sure you're rotating who's playing where. We don't want one, one person to feel like they always play in the back and aren't allowed to play up top or vice versa. Um, we call that pigeonholing players um and they're just too young to, too young to have us do that to them so um switch it up give them options 
Um, here's, we're just going to go over restarts real quick for anyone who may be new and doesn't know anything um, and needs us you know, to get that information. All restarts are kicks. And restarts mean when the ball goes out of bounds, you know, how do you restart? Um, all kick-ins. So no throw-ins at this age. If it goes out of bounds on the end line, it'll be a regular kick-in. And then if it goes out of bounds on the goal line, you'll either have a goal kick or a corner kick. Um, the goal kicks, the ball's going to be placed in front of the goal and the other team needs to back up to half field. Um, and then for corner kicks, it's taken from the corner arc of the field. Called it corner kick, you take it from the corner. Pretty pretty easy stuff. Um, going back to the last slide real quick. Um, oh, we went forward. All right. Um, no offsides, right, 4v4. No offsides, no cherry pickers. There's no goalkeepers. You use micro goals. Um, all real easy. And then the competitive balance, similar to if a, play, a team comes with not enough players, um, if you're killing a team by a lot of goals, that's no fun for the other team who's losing. And we want to make sure, again, everyone has a positive experience. So a couple of things you can do. Um, if a team is losing, we would say four goals or more, um, they can add an extra player to the field. Um, and then once the deficit is reduced by three, so say the other team scores, then they go back to four. Um, additionally, right, if you're the leading team, and try and do things as the coach to kind of even the playing field, rotate players. If you have someone who's scoring over and over and over and over again, um, maybe have them play in the back and encourage them to play deep, you know, be a, be a defender. That's where you can teach them different things um, and help them learn that way. Um, play your less developed players more, right? If you have some weaker players that normally struggle. This might be a game where they can be successful. So play them a little more and then add conditions, right? You have to pass it twice or you have to do this or that before you can score. Um, just, and I think that's important too, because sometimes we get emails where we're like, well, we're winning by 10 zero, but then we take all our players off and then they're not getting playing time and they're not learning, right? Well, there are ways to kind of even the playing field without, you know, that being the circumstance, right? Um, so just be creative, you know, be a coach to your players, help them be a positive experience for everyone have a positive environment um we don't want anyone to leave the field crying like this as a baseline right that's they want to avoid that um referees so this is important and we say it every season but um sometimes people forget and some people are new um referees are not hired they're not employed they're not assigned by loud and soccer so um if you have a referee issue right um it's a whole separate private contracting company um, and with that said, a lot of the issues that come with refs or the emails we get complaints about is that their game didn't have referee. Um, it is possible, right? There's a big referee shortage right now where there aren't enough referees for all the games happening. Um, so you may show up and you may not have a referee. I will send out an email Friday night with all the games um, that don't have a referee assigned yet. So hopefully you'll know going into the weekend. Um Referees can drop games up until the start of the game, though, because, again, they're private contractors. They pick when they want to work. They pick what games they want to work. They could they could pick an 8 a.m. game and a 5 p.m. game, and that's all they do, right? Like, so it's hard to manage. Um, just know that, like, you may not have a referee, and it's not us assigning them. We're not sabotaging your team by never giving you a ref. Um, that's a whole different scenario. Um if you don't have referee for multiple games in a row, you can email us and we can reach out to them and try and get them to you know, pick up a game and work with you that way. Um, but again, they sign up for what they want. And so it can be hard to kind of uh, manage that. Um, and then kind of just a general that be nice to referees. Again, there is a shortage. We want to keep them. Um, they may not make the call you think it is. And they may not make the call that you like. Um, that doesn't mean you can yell at them and it doesn't mean that you should be mean to them. Um, especially if they're 14, 17 years old, like some of these referees are very young. So again, just with being a positive influence to players or to referees on the field and to being a good role model to your, to your players, um, treat people with kindness, have grace, you know, be forgiving. Um, everyone's gonna make mistakes and it's good. It's just good to, you know, add to the positive experience and not add to the negative one. Um, and then, yeah, they're learning just like you. Referees are gonna be imperfect. It's okay. Um, and I kind of talked about this, just model appropriate behavior, right? We want to be positive in all aspects, right? Whether that's talking to referee, interacting with the other coach, um, or the way you coach, like we want it to be, um, positive. We want to have, you know, you know, good expectations for our coaches. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're coaching, right? You're coaching first and second graders, right? So just 
get that in the back of your mind. Um, you're responsible for your team and your fan conduct, right? So if parents are getting rowdy, um, you're going to be the one that we kind of rely on to manage that. If anything gets out of hand, right, always you know, let me know. If anything's too above your pay grade, right, um, loop me in. But for, you know, most scenarios, right, we're going to kind of lean on you guys to kind of manage that and be the example for people. Um, along with that, you know, say good game after referee, thank the referee, thank the other team, and then clean up your area, right? Part of, you know, rec soccer is having snacks after the game. If everyone leaves their snacks throughout the day, by the time it gets to the last game, it's just a, a trash dump. So try not to incorporate to that um, environment and clean up after you leave. And then again, report serious issues to me. Um, I can handle it for you. You don't have to handle the big stuff, um, but loop me in, right? I don't, I can't help. I can't fix something if I don't know about it. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is good for you guys to know, especially if you're new, um, who to contact for what. Um, generally, you can contact me for most things, right? I'm kind of your direct report. Um, I can help you with most things. If it's the practice schedule though, I will say that's the one thing that I can tell you I don't do. Um, I've already gotten a lot of emails about the practice schedule and I forward them straight to Jamie. Um, she's gonna be the one who wanted to email. So her email's here. You can either write it down now or you can come back later. Um, but if you want the direct line for whoever you know you need to talk to to fix your practice schedule or change something, she's gonna be well, the one you're gonna wanna talk to about that. And then Darren is our technical staff. Um, he oversees everything. So you ever need an extra person to kind of contact about something, he's someone you can contact as well. And then good luck. That's all I have for you. Um, hopefully that was informative. Um, hopefully it's a good season, right? And if it's not a good season, something's keeping it from being a positive experience. Again, let me know. Um, but for the most part, um, good luck. If you need anything from me, you can reach me on my email. Um, hopefully I've gotten back to you so far if you email me over the weekend. Um, again, if you email me after 4.30 p.m. today, I haven't gotten to it yet, um, but I'm getting to it. My away message says, give me 48 hours. That's generous. I don't normally take 48 hours, um, but just know that if I haven't gotten to you right away, right now there's a lot of emails coming in. I just probably haven't gotten to your email yet. So so hang with me. If it gets to be a couple days I haven't responded, follow, follow up with me, send me a follow-up email, um, and we can go from there. But um, yeah, that's all I have. Um, I'll let you guys go early. I know there's a couple of hands raised, so I'll answer those questions. Um, I have a question. More hands raised. Okay. Um, we won't stay on super long, but let's we'll work through some of these questions. Yeah, go ahead. I have two questions. Uh, the first yeah. question, real fast. Um, back to like um, like jewelry or anything. Can um, mm -hmm. if my son has earrings that he's had since he was like three, can we put the white tape? I know, like when I played soccer, we put tape on it. Is that allowed or no? Yeah, I would say um, it's always going to determine or it's always going to be determined by the referee. Like some referees okay. may say it's OK and some may not. I would say um, that's okay. who's going to be the person in charge of making that decision on the field. OK. OK. And last question um, for our practices. I know you don't do the practices, but uh, when we show up there, how do we know like which um, field is ours? Which or field is what? Yeah, right. we'll have field map. We have field maps on our website. They're not up to date yet. They're still <laughs> the field maps from last season, um, but mm -hmm. they'll be updated before the season starts. And you can go to the website and pull the field map up and you'll be able to see um, what field is where. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> we can just go down the line here. Uh, Mike, you have a question? Hello? Amanda, do you have a question? <clears throat> I can't hear anything. I don't know if I don't. I don't um, know if no one's talking or if. Okay, there we go. So no, no one's talking. This. My name is okay. Wade. I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> my son, my son's mother, and I both. We both, we had a joint account with Loudon Soccer and I volunteered uh -huh. to be his coach. So now it shows her name as the coach and her last name as the coach's name. And I've been on the phone with people all day trying to get this corrected, but I haven't been able to get in touch with anybody. Yeah, um, that's a pretty easy fix. If you haven't emailed me yet, just go ahead and email me and I can fix that for you. 
Okay, what's your email? Mac.brody at loudensoccer.com. It's also on the previous slide oh, and they'll be posted okay, to the website. You. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then as far one small other question, as far as the schedule, is it normal that I only see the first practice? I don't see anything else at this point. Yeah, yeah. So Jamie uploaded the first week of practice. She doesn't upload the whole thing right away because, again, there's usually changes that need to be made, and it's easier to fix one practice than seven. So um, those will be added later, but for now, you should just have the first week in there. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hey, this is Dan Morella. A question for you. Yeah. Um, this happened a couple times in the fall where we showed up and uh, there was no referee that, or like there was a gate that was locked or uh, mm -hmm. we couldn't figure out which field we were supposed to use. I tried calling the office because I figured that would be the best way to do it. Um, but I always got a message that the offices were closed. And if I tried emailing, I never knew if I was going to get a response back. What should we do on game yeah. days when things are closed? Yeah, I would say emailing me directly is probably the easiest way. I do try and check my email like pre periodically in case things like that happen. Um, if you call our office, there may not be anyone here because it is a Saturday. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen where there's a gate locked a lot. That would be a parks and rec thing and not necessarily us. Um, so I'm not exactly sure that right person to contact for that, but um, for you, field there, purposes, yeah. Yeah, is there like resources available for the different places where we play, where like they might have a contact number? Because I know last year we were at some some place in Leesburg and the fence was locked and games were about to start and parents were like trying to climb over the fence and a lot of people were falling. It was not a great situation. I mean, we made yeah. it, but it would have been nice to have somebody to call. Yeah, let me look. Let me look into that. I'll talk to Carolyn, who's our fields manager, and I'll let you guys know kind of what the verdict is on that because I'm not sure the best answer at this moment. All right, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else? Hey, Max. This is yeah. Just a quick question. Uh, not really about the schedule, but Rec One supposed to go for eight weeks. I mean, uh, looking at the session plan. Uh, but at the same time, I think you said the Jamboree is May 18th, or did you say the last match is May 18th? But the eighth, eighth week would be May 22nd. I, I guess I'm asking, when? what's the last kind of week or last day, just to confirm? That, yeah, uh, that yeah this, the, the season runs for seven weeks, not eight weeks. And so the Jamboree is the first week, so it's April 6th, and then the 18th is the last week. There may be an Got extra week in there. Just for you to use if you want, but it's a seven week program, yeah. Seven week program, understood. Thank yeah. you. And you said uh, April 6th is the Jamboree. And uh, where was mm -hmm. that be again? That's at Loudon Soccer Park. Um, that'll be in your calendar when we post the game schedule. Um, so you'll have all that information when it's posted, like the address, where you're at, what game time, what field. You'll have all that in your calendar. Understood. And just this last uh, question, the equipment pickup, is that also happening at Loudon Soccer? Because one of the emails we mm -hmm. saw, like there was a form against each of the fields. Uh, can I go to like Aldi, where the games are uh, currently kind of, uh, you know, practice sessions are happening and pick up equipment from there, or do I just come to Loudon Soccer? Park? Yeah, all the equipment is bagged and um, here at Loudon Soccer at our mm -hmm. office. So you'll have to come by our office to pick it up. Understood. Thanks for confirming. No problem. Anyone else? I like, yes, this is Vadim. I have a two hey. questions. Um, okay. Is how do I get a system coach? I think you touched briefly on the beginning on that. But last mm -hmm. year, that's us automatically assigned to our team. Is there a way to do yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody on your team, request or like registered as an assistant coach they've been placed on your team um if you don't have an assistant coach yet that means none of the parents on your team registered as an assistant coach um when you send out your email welcoming you know the team and introducing yourself you can let them know you're looking for some help and if anyone's interested in assistant coaching they can let you know um you can also ask them in person um i find that that works really well right at your first practice if you all the parents are there and you're like hey is anyone interested in helping out 
people usually are you know eager to help because they don't have to be the head coach they're like oh yeah I'll, I'll do that right um so those are some ways you can do that again just if you do get someone to volunteer make sure they register on our website got it thank you and that mm -hmm. leads to the second question so when i contact yeah. the team should i contact via portal or can i go and contact directly from my email address by passing? you can do either yeah so on your team page you can either click email and you can email them through your team page or you can go to your roster and export your roster and you can email them through your personal email whichever one you prefer got it perfect thank you mm -hmm. no problem anyone else i can take like one or two more and then again you can email me if you have any questions too and i can get back to you that way yeah did mac this is steve lee i have one question around yeah. the yeah. discount um is it all dicks location including web website orders or is it just loudon county dicks locations um I think it's loud. Sure. I think I, I think, think it's you know, I think it's loud and just loud and yeah, I think locations. Yeah. Okay. Because I, that, I that kind of makes sure sense. We'll because location. when I looked yeah. at the website, it showed only particular loud and county sites. Yeah. The asked. advertisement on our website um mm -hmm. is gonna be able to tell you where you can go to do that. Okay. I'm not sure which particular ones we are using, but it'll tell you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Matt, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> I finally, finally figured it out. So just two things. Uh, one of the things, let me figure out your train of thought. Uh, can you ask the refs to put back the goals uh, to wherever they're supposed to be at? Because last uh, fall and last spring, I'm over there, me and my, son, my youngest son, we're just walking around collecting goals, trying to figure out where they're at just to bring them back to practice. And that kind of like that, takes yeah. some time. So is that for practice or for like Saturday for practice, games? For practice. Yeah, you won't have a referee at your practice. Um, the goals get moved, I think. We'll have mostly referees at the practice? If you're... No, no. I'm saying you won't have them there because you had said, can we tell the referees to move the goals back? No, 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 um, no, no, no. You're mistaking me. I'm asking, can you ask the rest of the coaches to put oh, back the, the goals? after the practice because sometimes i'm wasting half of my time trying to figure out where the goals are at just to get practice yeah, and yeah. um yeah i mean all the coach most of the coaches are here um i would say a lot of the times goals are moved by people not in our program um where we do try our best to kind of get the goals resituated before practices start um, but yes, I can let people know when I send out my coach's email that if they did, if they moved a goal to move it back. Yeah. Yeah. Most That's of them are question. at school. So like during recesses, like if kids move yeah. on, like it's, it's like, I hear you. I got to do the same thing at, in my field too, but it's, uh, it's usually like after school. So it's kind of tough. And my um, second question is, is if we don't have refs, then obviously it's onto the coaches is to remind the coaches slash refs to have the parents sit in the designated area mm -hmm. because a lot of the times I'm having, or not necessarily on my team, on other people's teams, I'm having their parents coach their kids and mm -hmm. they don't even know what's going on at that point. Yeah, we can, we'll send out reminders before the season starts and we can put that in there, yeah. Thanks. Mike, I have a I quick think... question. Yeah. Mike, you have another question? No, that's it, thanks. Uh, Hey, Mac, is it too late to get anybody else added? Like, my team is pretty short. Um, yeah, we'll we'll continue adding people as they register. Um, okay, so, well, they can't yeah. register now. Oh. I had, like, I tried to get a, a, a family friend in, and they can't register. Should I yeah. just email you? Yeah, so, yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll add people to teams that have space. But, again, yeah, just go through me, send me an email, okay. and we can talk through that specific, you know, scenario. But. Thanks. It'll be like a case by case basis, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and end it for tonight. It's getting a little bit late. Um, again, if you want to email me a question, go ahead and I'll make sure to get back to you. Um, and then obviously throughout the season, you have my email. If you need anything, have any questions, email me. 
Um, don't wait till the end of the season to let me know something has happened and your season was horrible because of X, Y, Z. Um, if you let me know like early on, like when it happens, then we can work together to fix it. Um, just know I'm reachable. Hopefully I'm approachable. Um, and I'm here to work with you and to kind of make your life as easy as possible. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and you'll hear from me as we get closer to the season. Um, have a great night, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks.